The year was 2017 when a research paper introducing transformers was published. Looking back, this was probably the moment that changed the field of AI forever, as it led to the development of generative pre-trained transformers or GPT. Yes, ChatGPT is an application that has GPT-3 at its core. All this might look intimidating, but the concepts behind transformers are very simple. This video has two main goals. Explain transformers and its various components. And then build and train a simple transformer based classifier from scratch. So without further ado, let's get started. At its core, transformers get their superpowers from a mechanism called self-attention. In simple terms, self-attention is a sequence to sequence operation. Uh, what I mean by this is that it takes in a sequence which can be a sentence or just a series of numbers and returns a different sequence. How exactly that happens? Let's look at the details. Everything starts with the dataset. For the illustration, I'm using the simple IMDB dataset for classifying a review as positive or negative. There are two main parts to this dataset. The actual review which is in raw text form and a corresponding label mentioning whether it's a good or a bad review. The label 1 in this case means that the review is actually good. This is one example but for this problem we have a total of 20,000 such reviews. Some good and some bad. We know that the computers can only make sense of numbers. So we have to find a way to do this. A very common way is just to collect all the individual words in the dataset and store them to create a vocabulary. Now we can simply assign all of them a unique number. Looking at this vocabulary, we can map any review to a set of numbers. So finally, we have a bunch of sequences of numbers that essentially represent a sentence. But there's a problem with this. All these are of different lengths and to feed these into a transformer and utilize parallelism, we have to make sure that they are of same lengths. And this can be done by simply padding each sequence with zeros at the end. To understand how self-attention works, let's just look at one of these sequences and only consider the first five words. Now representing each word with a single number is okay, but it doesn't convey much information. It would be a lot better if we can write each word as a vector of say length 7 rather than just a single number. Uh, by the way, I'm picking 7 as an arbitrary number and you can choose something else as well. This can be done using embedding class from PyTorch itself. Now there are a lot of things that I can say about in this embedding class, but I won't go down the rabbit hole and for the purpose of this video, just think of this as another unique mapping from an integer to a floating point vector of desired length, which is based on the vocabulary size. So just to recap, we have now transformed and stored the review in form of a tensor of shape 1 cross 5 cross 7, uh, where 1 is because I'm only looking at a single review and 5 is for the number of words in this review and 7 is the embedding dimension. Uh, by the way, you can find the code for doing all of this in the video description. If you remember, self-attention is just a sequence-to-sequence -sequence operation. In this case, these sequences are individual words. What self-attention does is takes the weighted average of each of these words. This can be seen as pre-multiplying the input matrix by a weight matrix. The output matrix is then of the same size as that of the input matrix. Now we have a way to get the output but what about this weight matrix? The weight matrix is calculated by simply multiplying the input with its transpose. In this case, the input matrix is 7 elements wide, but it can be longer. So it's better to scale the output by dividing it with the square root of the embedding dimension. Finally, as it is a weightage matrix, we would like each row to sum to 1. This can be done by applying softmax to each row of this matrix. Writing this as a python function is pretty straightforward. For a given input tensor x, we can use pytorch to define matrix multiplication and return the output. Now there's a problem here. If I change the sequence of the words in a sentence, it can alter the meaning of a sentence. However, the output from self-attention does not change. It's only rearranged in the same order as the inputs. This is problematic as the self-attention operation does not seem to care too much about the order of the words in a sentence. This can be solved by incorporating positional encoding. 
Position encoding is done by simply adding another matrix which contains the information related to the positions of the words in a sentence. This position matrix can be generated using PyTorch's embedding layer as well. All we have to do is define the embedding dimension, which is 7 in this case, max number of words in a sentence that you anticipate, and then we can just generate the matrix and reshape it to match the shape of our input matrix. As you can see that the self-attention operation isn't that complicated. However, you might be thinking that where is machine learning? Well, in theory, self-attention has nothing to do with machine learning, but we can modify this framework to incorporate that. If you look carefully, there are three ways in which the input matrix X is being used in self-attention. Instead of using X as it is, if we send this matrix through three separate neural nets and then apply self-attention to the outputs, we can incorporate learning from data in self-attention. By the way, these three output matrices are called query, key, and value. Transformers have some historical baggage associated with them, which has led to this query, key, and value name. In any case, it's irrelevant as far as the mathematics or the technique is concerned. So finally, with this, we have a self-attention mechanism that can actually learn from the data. Now, I would like to take a moment and discuss why are we actually doing this? What exactly we want to achieve by first passing, a, say, a sentence through three different neural nets and then perform different operations on them to get the final output. As the input is represented by a matrix uh, where each row represents an individual word in a vector form whose length is predecided, the output from each neural net is of the same dimension. We can think of these as a transformed version of the input and this transformation is dictated by the dataset. The weight matrix is an interesting one with the dimensions of number of words by number of words. This matrix essentially captures the relationship between different words in a sentence. Here is an attention weight matrix from a transformer trained on the IMDB dataset. From this we can see it capturing things like the word screenplay which is related to movie and that the enchanting word is for the screenplay. However, it also missed a lot. There is no understanding as to what is good in this sentence or in fact what is being said about the movie. Nevertheless, this weight matrix is then used to get the output which is the same dimension as the input. This output can be thought of as the input modified by the attention mechanism to capture the important information. You might have noticed how I quickly glossed over this shortcoming of the self-attention. As it turns out, we can do something to mitigate this using multi-head attention. We know that in single-head attention, an input matrix is sent to three neural nets to get query, key, and value. A self-attention is then applied to these three matrices to get the output. In multi-head attention, we get query key value from the input just like the single-head version. However, now these large matrices are split into R smaller matrices and then R parallel self-attentions are performed to get R different output matrices. Uh, this is where the terminology multi-head comes in as we are performing R different self-attentions in parallel. After this, these output matrices are concatenated to form a larger output matrix which is finally sent through a matrix multiplication to unify all these heads. A thing to notice is that in this case, we'll have our different attention matrices and that trained a transformer with four heads and these are the four attention matrices from that. Now you can see connections being made between a lot of different words. As Feynman once said, what I cannot create, I do not understand. So let's code self-attention. The input is 3D tensor with B representing the batch size or the number of reviews in this case. T are the number of words in the review and K is the vector representation of each word. Another thing we have to ensure is that the number of heads divide the embedding length evenly. Now we can define the three neural nets and pass the input tensor through them to get query key and value. Next we perform the slicing operation to split these large tensors into multiple heads. Remember that self-attention on different heads can be performed in parallel. And to facilitate this, I'll just roll the dimension representing different heads into the batch one. Finally comes the parallel self-attention, which gives different output tensors, followed by the concatenation of different heads. Finally, the unifying neural net layer, which gives the final output. Now, we can use this code to build a full-fledged transformer and train it on IMDB dataset. There are five steps to transformers. Everything starts with the token embedding, where each word is represented as a vector. 
We then add position information to these vectors using positional embedding, which is followed by the self-attention, and then a fully connected network which leads to the output. So I trained a transformer on IMDB dataset for 20 epochs. As you can see, I selected the embedding dimension to be 32 and 4 heads for the self-attention. Here is the plot showing accuracy on the test dataset after each update and you can see the accuracy increasing as the network trains. I'm providing the complete code for the transformer's neural network and would encourage you to try it out yourself. And please do let me know what you think about it down in the comments. That's it for today and I'll see you next time.